Camp Pros. This is Oliver Gregan, Summer and Family Camp Director at YMCA Camp Jewel. And I'm Matt Hansberger. I'm the executive producer of podcasting at Go Camp Pro, and you are listening to First Class Counselors. This is the series for camp directors to give to their counselors as they hire and prepare them for the upcoming summer or for you as a counselor to just listen yourself. That's right. Um, because great camp directors know that you camp counselors out there have the most important job at camp. If you are a great camp counselor, you have the ability to make or break a camper's week. So if you want that camper to uh, come back next summer, which your camp director definitely wants, then uh, you can take the tips that we're going to give you in this podcast and apply it to be the best counselor ever. So thank you for tuning in to First Class Counselors, where here we'll cover one specific topic and cover the essentials as fast as we can. It's the needs and knows. The can't go without. The fundamentals. The basics. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about friendship at camp. So counselors come from all over the world to experience camp, and part of that is to walk away with a friend, finding a new home, and making some lasting memories. After the camper experience, the summer camp experience is also a counselor experience. But 21st century friendship making is tough especially at camp when social skills today are practiced on Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all these other social medias. So how do you make camp friends in real life? Because camp doesn't have those things and that technology involved. And at camp, you're working, living, eating, sleeping, shaving, brushing your teeth, sweeping, scrubbing, cooking, singing, falling, running, playing, swimming, climbing, caring for children, cheering, painting, paddling, shooting, acting, crying, and everything under the sun and in the cabin together. These things can form or break friendships really quickly. So today, we wanna to talk to you about how to fit in at camp, how to make friends, how to be cool, and how to make camp the best experience for you too. So to start off, Matt, let's start talking about why is camp such a perfect place to start making friends? What are those conditions that camp gives us that breeds friendship so well? Yeah, and I think for, I'm speaking for both of us here that like camp, we've met some of the best and most important people in our lives because of camp, right? All of my, literally all of my best friends are camp people, um, including you, Oliver. So, you know, I've met some amazing people because of, because of camp. And I think some of the conditions that make that, uh, make that so is because you're working with the, these common causes and common values. We're all here working to make kids have the best summer of their lives, right? And if we can do that um, and have that shared goal, it's for like, you're, you're hanging out for the best of reasons. Um, and I found, so my background is in religious camping and I think it's kind of cool. You're with fellow young quote unquote Christians, but you're with people with some like common values in that way too, where you can like share and bounce that those values off of each other and get to know people in a similar way, but in a really unique environment. Um, I think another great thing about camp is that it just the culture of it promotes a common ground. Like, you know what it's like in school with all the cliques and all of the, you know, the cool kids who's wearing the latest Yeezys. Is that a thing? It, like the latest, all the latest clothes and stuff like that. That doesn't happen at camp because we, we have that idea at our camps, um, at least in my experience, and I think in yours too, Oliver, that everyone is equal, that you are a co-counselor with your friends. It doesn't matter what background you come from, what social class, what race, what religion, anything like that. You're all here working together and working hard to make kids' lives better. Um, the last thing I would say is that just that working hard together. Camp is not an easy job job and you work super hard but that camaraderie that you get from working hard together is one of the fastest most easy ways to form bonds with people so for all those reasons i think that you know camp is perfect for making those long lasting friends what about you oliver uh yeah i it is the perfect place to make friendship kind of happen there are some stresses that are already taken out right so you as a counselor typically don't have to worry about you know what you're getting paid because the money you make just ends up in your bank account. You're not worried about your day-to-day -day paycheck because you're just at camp living life, right? So paycheck's kind of out the window. Your food is provided to you at most camps. You don't have to worry about, you know, what am I going to eat tonight? Do I have to wash the dishes? Do I need to go grocery shopping for this thing? How expensive is dinner going to be tonight? All that mm -hmm. is kind of wiped away, those common issues. And you get to be in that camp bubble and the big life things are out. And a lot of counselors, you know, especially returning counselors who might be coming back for their fourth or fifth year, 
you know, they could definitely be going to do something, but they enjoy coming to, back to camp because it lets them get into that bubble where they don't have to always worry about outside issues. They really just get to focus on this and this moment. And it is about very much living in the present, which is so great. And Matt had a lot of big points as well with community aspects. You know, you are a part of this community. Typically, you all have the same values in some way, whether they're Christian, Jewish, sports, it doesn't matter. There's a lot of different things that people can connect on. And typically, the camp you're going to has something that you're connecting to right there in that place. Uh, I also love team building, which is a huge thing that we do here at Camp Jewel. And we talk about the form, the storm, and the norm, right? So when you're working as a group, first you form a group of people, then you storm because you're trying to work on something together that you have to get ready, and then you normalize. And this is kind of a, you know, rotation throughout the summer, right? You're going to have times where you're forming, storming, and norming throughout the entirety of the summer. But if you talk to some of the great team builders, out in the camping industry. They'll also talk to you about this last step called performing. Uh, I like to call it projects, but it comes to the point where you're not just forming, storming, and norming like you would in a basic team building project, where at the end of the day, the outcome isn't super important, right? If you can't find all the letters to a, the scavenger hunt, it's not a big deal, it's a game and you can lose. Mm -hmm. But with camp, when you're working together with these people, you have to perform. There is a repercussion if you don't do well enough. So now you've formed, stormed, and normed with all these people, hopefully in staff training, the big storm gets out of the way and all this. But um, when you come to that time when you have kids and you're doing activities, you're performing together, which is the last step and one of the tightest bond creators in the team building experience. And that happens every day at camp. And you know, like I said, there's a lot of these little cycles of form, storm, norm, and perform happening throughout the whole summer. So every single time you perform with somebody, your bond gets tighter and tighter with them. And those conditions make you a stronger unit. And, you know, you're not taking a rest at the end of the day. You're performing again. You're taking the next step. And even when things get tough, you still continue to have to perform. And because of that kind of foraging by fire that camp creates, you can, in the time of one month or two months at camp make a friendship that may have felt you know like you've known this person forever because you don't leave it's constant um, which is the other thing is the ratio of summer camp time which is kind of what i'm leading into is in normal jobs and in normal life you may go and you're only with those people for an hour or a few hours a day with camp you're with those people all day every day all summer um, sometimes they're on the other side of camp or something but that relationship you build with them is much quicker. It's not social media. It's upfront and it's honest and it's in real life. So you create these friendships really, really quick. Um, I have caught the bad bug of watching a horrible reality TV show recently. Um, it's on Netflix. It's called, I think, um, Is Love Blind or Blind Love, something like this. And these people have to marry each other within like a month of meeting each other. But when they first meet each other, they meet each other blind. And it reminded me so much of camp because they actually had to talk to each other. They actually spent like a week talking to each other. And it was incredible to see the mm -hmm. difference that the, these bonds that these people were making when they actually were spending time with each other all the time. It was pretty cool to watch. Now, granted, the show has a lot of other things and this is not a plug to go and watch that show. But the idea of it, of this conversation, this time uh, that comes into it is very like camp. I thought it was really cool. Uh, Matt, did you have anything else you wanted to add on this subject? Well, yeah, I, th I think the, the whole blind thing, just that like lack of technology at camp is, I think you hit on it um, in the intro and we might talk about it a little later too. But that lack of technology is huge for, um, for people to make those genuine connections because, you know, if you're not, if you're taking the chance to unplug or your camp has terrible cell phone reception, which might be the case for a lot of places, then you just, you, you have to embrace that and you have to talk to each other. So I think we're, that's a great, a great segue because we're going to get into talking about ways to make friends this summer. And these are all ways that you can do it without, uh, the aid of technology. So Oliver, do you have uh, some practical ways that our listeners can make friends this summer? Yeah, my, my first one is a real cheat. Um, if, you're, if you're a staff member who lives in the area and you have a car, man, you just became one of the most popular people on camp just from having that vehicle. That does not mean go out before summer camp and make sure you have a car. That does not mean steal your parents' car for the summer. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you are a staff member who does have a car, don't deny 
someone a ride all the time. Obviously, you need your personal time to go out into town and do whatever you need to. But if you can fill your car up with people and you even drop them off into town every once in a while or fill them up and you go to a place with them, you are aiding in friendship and a big deal at camp. Mm. If you've ever been a part of camp, you know how important it is to get off camp for even a little bit, reduce that stress, get some good food in you, maybe go shopping for some dumb stuff at the local Walmart or um, Canadian Tire, wherever it might be. And <laughs> Shout out to Canadian Tire. <laughs> uh, it's all about plugs this episode. Nobody goes there on their day off, Oliver. It's That's a- where I used to go when I worked in Canada. We went to Canadian Tire. It's great. Why? <laughs> it was the biggest store in the area. Fair. Okay. Um, I would yeah. say I would say with the, with the car thing though, Oliver. Um, you know, I've been I've never I've never been the person with the car. Um, I wasn't that popular apparently. No, but but with with the car, make sure if you are going in someone's car, make sure you're being really grateful and respectful of that person's car too. I would say like offer them gas money because it's, I don't think it should be on the driver to to have to ask people for gas money but it should definitely be on you as a person using that car and don't expect that they're going to use that car either um just i've seen some i've seen some well-meaning people get taken advantage of because they had the car so it will make you popular but also make sure you set some clear boundaries and if you're driving that car be be a be a good passenger don't leave garbage give gas money be a good person yeah also (laughs) that's a really good thing if you are the passenger in that car follow those rules like offer some money for gas offer um like clean up the car after you're done with it but yeah. also if you need to go anywhere specific tell people before the car ride so they know where you might be going ahead of time and if you do go to places like walmart or canadian tire um don't take forever know what you're gonna get and get in there and get out there's nothing worse than being that kind person who's driven everybody and then you're sitting at the front door of wherever you're shopping just waiting for somebody to get what they need and get out. Now, obviously, if you've never been to the United States or Canada before, it's your first time going around. Um, it might be tough to find everything in a Walmart. They're pretty big and crazy and a wonderful part of American culture. Um, maybe have the person who's driving help you find stuff, but uh, uh, but yeah. try not to take super, super long when you're shopping. Um, <clears throat> cool. Um, Matt, I just had one, so you wanna take one? Sure. I'll go back to the the lack of technology and just some, some things that you can do without that. I just like, I think embrace it. Even if you are a camp where you're allowed to have your phone on your time off, I know some camps do and some camps don't. Um, I, I think like the less phones that you can have, unless you're using it some way to promote community. And even then I would say like a text group or like an Instagram group is not community, even though you might be with um, staff and maybe like sharing memes is a fun thing to do. It is a fun thing to do, but I would say that just be really careful of not falling into that because that's what you would do at home. Take advantage of the fact that you're like at camp. So maybe your camp allows you to go and shoot archery on your on your hour off or on your time off. If there's structured ways that you can take advantage of that, maybe go on a weekend camping trip on site if that's if that's available to you. Um, just finding those ways to not need technology to make connections, play games with each other, um, do yoga with people, have conversations with people, share your snacks on time off and just have those conversations. Um, because all of my best memories, you know, when, when I was a counselor back in my day, when I was an old man, um, we didn't have, when I was a young man, we didn't have like smartphones and stuff. And there was like one shared computer with really crappy internet. So we just didn't have that. And a lot of my favorite memories are going on like adventures and hikes and um, that kind of thing. So don't despair um the fact that you might not have access to your phones i think try to embrace that the best you can that's my my first big tip i'll throw it back to you oliver no yeah um i love how we're such big technology haters yeah we podcast so yeah. um <laughs> uh let me see don't focus on who you're always going to be with on the time off but focus on enjoying the time off for what it is mm-hmm. um i i find i work at a camp right now who has a lot of international staff that come in and they make friends with that first person they meet at camp, right? Like whoever they maybe flew in on, like they came in the airport on that same day, uh, or maybe it's whoever you first meet at camp that instantly becomes your camp friend and you attach yourself to them because they're the first person. And they think instantly that all their time off has to be spent with that person. But during staff training, spread yourself out, meet some people, uh, get around, say hello. We'll talk about how to do some of those things in a little bit. But uh, 
focus on just getting off of camp with people, getting to be a part of those adventures, right? I always said to fellow staff that if you're looking to get off camp, don't focus so much on what you're gonna be doing, right? Someone might be doing chores, right? They might be doing laundry, they might need to go and pick something up from uh, Walmart, whatever it might be, right? Uh, but if that's happening, just hop in the car, like spend a day with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and maybe do some meaningless tasks, but you're getting off camp, you're going on an adventure, you're gonna, and you never know what could happen. I have some great stories from just random getting off camp adventures that happened when I least expected it. Yeah. Um, and that is my hint there. Matt, do you have something else that you want to give up? Yeah, I, I think that I, I love that. I had spending days off together on my list too, just like going to cottages with people. Um, if you're allowed to be on site, I think you don't need a car. You can hang out on site. Um, I'll give you three quick ones to wrap up this section. Um, one, I would say carpool to camp together, kind of a transition there. So if you're a day camp, you know, find ways that you can travel to camp together in the morning and just getting that morning coffee together can be really nice. Um, or even in an overnight camp setting, I know if I um, took advantage of carpooling, my parents would have been really happy not to have to drive me all the way up to camp, even at the start of the summer um, or halfway through or something like that. Um, the next two are quick ones are one, do physical labor together. Um, that's a great way. This isn't on time off. This is just anytime. Anytime when you can do hard work together, like lifting or moving heavy things or digging holes or anything like that, I've made some amazing connections. Um, at the camp I grew up, not warm um so you know some of the best times that i've had with friends are um in wetsuits freezing our butts off putting the docks in so physical labor is a good way and then uh finally singing together i know this is way out of left field from what we've been talking about but um i i say and i believe very strongly that a staff who sings together stays together um so i would always take advantage of times to play my guitar or um just sit next to a friend who can sing harmony with me or those kinds of things. Cause that, that is really going to help build those connections. Oliver, yeah. what you got to wrap this up? No, you, you make a really great point there. And one of my notes was if you have a skill, use it, right? Mm -hmm. If you have yep. like singing is, you know, I say whip out your guitar. If you have a guitar, I can't play or sing, please never ask. Um, <laughs> you can experience it, but you'll won't enjoy it. Uh, do those kind of things. Show off those little skills. Like even if it's you're good at a yo-yo or you can do a Rubik's Cube or you know a playing card game, um, put that in your back pocket so you always have the chance to bring it out. Um, I've definitely seen the counselors who, you know, they can play guitar and they literally carry their guitar around with them all day long because they never know if they're going to get that 10 to 15 minutes on camp where they're mm -hmm. waiting for something to happen and they can just play guitar. Um, and although I don't carry run guitars that often, I know that if it's in like a backpack, it's not super heavy. So um, it's a good thing. But my last note um, is kind of a bunch of notes, but these are quick psychological things that you can do, um, small actions that will help create better friendships. They're proven, um, which is really cool. Uh, the first one is mirroring. So that's copying what somebody else is doing. So uh, if they stretch at one point, you stretch at one point. If they cross their legs, you cross their legs. This is a really strange thing, but it's just complimenting someone's body language. And if so much body language is a huge part of our conversation already. We say like, I think mean, it's something like 70% of a conversation is truly through body language. Um, mirroring is basically complimenting that person. So try to do that and you will start to see that people will enjoy your company. It's cool and strange. Uh, another one is complimenting people. Just shooting out a compliment is a really cool uh, way to appreciate someone else's work, but it also gives them a little ego boost and it makes them happy to be around you because when they feel good and you're around them complimenting all the awesome things that they do, they start to continue doing those things. So if they do good work or they do something really nice, compliment them. It also opens up your eyes to the really cool things that are happening out in the world around you. Uh, next one is smile. It's actually just proven that the mood in a room can be picked up even if you're fake smiling um, because it's just natural that smiles are associated with happiness. And even over time, even fake smiles, smiles become real smiles. And it's something that I like to do just around the office because I know that people will pick up because they see, oh, Oliver's smiling today, something good must happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe nothing is good happening. Maybe I'm smiling because bad stuff is happening. I'm trying to throw it down the drain, but <laughs> um, the smile is still there because it will improve. And I was smiling that entire time. And at the end, Matt laughed. So it proved something. Next sure. is 
all, before you, before you go, Oliver, I just, one thing that I did um, as a director, this really helped me was I, I promised myself that every time I walked into the dining hall that was full of people, I would walk in with a smile on my face, no matter what, like, crazy phone call I just had or what situation that I had was when I entered a room, I smiled because I wanted, because as a director, you know, we often will like set the temperature for a room. And if, if, if we're smiling, then people are at ease. But I think for you as a counselor with your campers or with your staff in the staff lounge, um, if you have one of those, I think that a, sm a smile goes a huge long way. So if you can maybe set that for a challenge for yourself to walk through a door and smile this summer, um, I think you'll see some great results from it. Yeah, I'll combine two things for that then. One is something that Matt taught in a previous uh, podcast and that thought that he just had is put something on your doors, a sticker or um, something that whenever someone goes to open that door, they see it and it's a reminder that, oh, when I open this door and walk through the door, I'm gonna leave everything behind me and I'm gonna walk through with a smile and we're gonna have a great time inside this room. Or mm -hmm. even have it in the opposite way because campus is just as much outdoors as it is indoors. So whenever I walk outside of a building, I'm also walking out with a smile because something good uh, can always happen on the other side of a door. Um, just two more of those quick psychology ones, or maybe, maybe three. Uh, one is listen. So just legitimately listen to people. Active listening is a huge skill that you can do. So hear somebody and then use it again. Um, a good example of this is probably just happened, right? Matt, I just said something from a former podcast that showed that I listened to him and I combined it with something he just said to make two Matt points become one Matt point, which means that I uh, really care about what Matt has to say. And I say thank you to him because I really trust him with all the information he provides, which is the next point. Trust people with what they're good at and what they do really well. And then say thank you to them for being amazing at what they do. Um, it allows them to know what they're good at and thanking them gives them the recognition for it right there. You don't always have to, like people always think this has to be up on a stage in front of everyone. This can be you just saying thank you to them while passing by and saying, hey, thank you so much for handling that for me or thank you so much for uh, talking to that camper. Whatever it might've been, say thank you, it really helps. And then my last one is a really cool one because um, it's based off an American historic, uh, historical figure. His name was Benjamin Franklin. If you don't know him, he's an old politician cool guy, but something that he used to do with people is he would ask for small favors. So he would say something like, oh, can you pass me that pen? Or can you pass me this thing? And then he would thank them for it. The reason why he did this was because it showed people that they could provide for him and that he needed them in his life. These were small favors, never anything super big. It wasn't like he was asking them to build a tower or, um, you know, to cross a mountain range or anything like that. Nothing crazy. It was small things, small, small favors, so that over time, those people knew that Ben needed them in his life uh, to help with all those little tiny things. And he would thank mm. them for it. And it worked really well. And it's a proven fact now. Um, thank you, Mr. Benjamin Franklin. So um, those are my sweet little psychology lessons of the day uh, to make sure that you can start building some stronger relationships with people. So what about you build this awesome friendship? You're going great. Everything seems hunky-dory at camp. But you don't want it to interfere with the job. You know, you still got to focus on these campers first. Matt, how do you make sure that you're focused on the job all the time, but still maintain those sweet, sweet friendships we just talked about? Yeah, it's funny. We talk about all these, all these things and we're like super excited about it. And then it's that remembering like, oh yeah, we're here for the campers first. And that's not a bad thing. That's just the reality of what camp is. And one of the benefits of camp is that while we're focusing on the campers, we're building these awesome connections with our staff. So I think the, the first time is just that camper first mindset. If you can keep yourself um, going with that, then that's a, a great place to start with. Um, uh, the, the phrase that I kind of tell myself or I tell, I ask the staff to remember is to think, you know, is this what's best for me and my friends or is this what's best for the campers? So that will help you avoid clumping, which is when staff magically gravitate towards each other and, and they stick together when they should be supervising kids or hanging out with campers. Um, and it'll also help with when watching out for cliques within your friend group as well. Like, am I being inclusive to everybody? Um, because, you know, you don't want to be the people that are going to create drama or be a source of drama at camp. Um, so if you have, if you can really focus on the campers, I noticed that the, all the issues kind of fade away into the, into the distance. Um, but a couple more points on uh, not being a source of drama. Uh, one is I always say to staff is that you don't have to like each other, but you at least have to respect each other. Or sometimes we would say love each other being kind of a 
Christian value, right? So you don't have to like each other, but you have to love each other because um, you're not going to like everyone you work with all the time. And you might actually not make friends with some people. We're not, we're not in this podcast. We should, we should say that, you know, you're not going to make friends with everybody and that's, that's okay. You're going to be closer with some people. Um, but uh you know, at least caring about people and not making cliques and not being excluded, exclusive of people. Um, anytime you're like, oh man, this is kind of like high school, then, you know, you've, you've done the wrong thing. On the other end of the drama spectrum, sometimes you're going to really like maybe one particular person. Um, and, uh, you know, relationships might happen at camp. Just, you know, we've seen it as directors, both Oliver and I have seen the downside of that, right? When it just adds to drama and you're, you know, you have people dating people and they're dating other people. And then, you know, that's clearly you have lost your focus from the campers and you're concerned about something else. Um, and it can get into a source of drama. If, if you want to know more about that, I think episode, th was it three, Oliver, three, four or five of first class yeah. counselors was, was all about uh, relationships at camp. So you can, um, you can tune into that to find, but the campers don't be a source of drama. And then I think everything is fine from there. Okay. Yeah. I think make sure your campers are first. You want to focus on them. Uh, and Matt really hit that pretty well at home. So, uh, I ask a question in interviews about why you're coming back to camp and mm -hmm. you can ask this question before you really think about it. And it's, you know, if you are thinking about coming back to camp, is the reason because you want to be with your friends again and you like that environment when you're around them? Or are you still coming back to camp because campers come first? And that's really the question you have to ask in your head and think about. And I have a lot of staff who do answer, unfortunately, with the answer of like, oh, like I want to be with my friends. That's where I made them. And, you know, it's our turn to give back. I'm like, all right, that's a little bit better. But um, really think about it because mm -hmm. you and your friends, if you're coming back to camp, should know that those campers come first because that's what made your experience so great because the counselor before you put you first and that's important um matt talked about clumping that's a really simple one please don't clump as a director please god don't clump um <laughs> i like time off talks is something that i find is a little irritating you do need to figure out what you're going to do when you go on time off and of course you always want to kind of debrief how time off wins but you got to make sure that you time the time off talks better than in front of your campers or while you're clumping because mm -hmm. uh, that's interfering your job. It's stopping you from doing the things you need to do. Um, being too friendly is a big one. Um, we had a podcast about it before about those relationships, but also is your goal to be as friendly as you can with campers or sorry, with counselors of the opposite gender. If that is true, then you are not here for the right reasons and you are letting your friendships and relationships get in the way of you being a good counselor. Uh, and then there's another one that really stands out to me a lot of the time. And this is the, that feeling of being left out. Um, and I see counselors really struggle with it when they don't feel like they're making friends. Um, and then they start to put themselves in this hole where they can't make friends anymore. It's a real big struggle and it interrupts with your ability to do your job. At the end of the day, if you're putting campers first, you're still at least handling that responsibility. And then talk to your camp director about you know, I'm really struggling feeling like a part of camp right now. I still love my campers. I still love making sure they have a great time, but I don't always feel like I'm getting that aspect of camp that's really important. And your camp director will do their best to help you out. Um, but it is true. It does sometimes happen. And we don't want you left out. We want to make sure you are a part of it. Uh, Matt, do you have one more? Yeah, I wanted to go back just because I know that relationship one was a long time in the distance. Um, so I think you know, no matter who you're interested in, um, no, no matter what, what gender that you're interested in or, or who you're interested in, just like make sure you are um, role modeling, right, for your campers and making sure that you're showing what's appropriate. Because I know that the way that we make friends, um, I know that sometimes for me, like, we, when I was a young 16 year old male, we did stupid things sometimes. Like, like, you, like if you like slap like on the football team that you do you know you don't want to be doing that in front of campers because that's not an example of what's appropriate um it's a weird part of sports culture that i don't really understand but i think that it's important that we um that we role model what what good re and healthy relationships whether they are amorous relationships between two people or they are just really good friendships we should role model for our campers so again that's kind of that camper first mindset all right 
Uh, now, Matt and I have some misc tips for making friends at camp. Uh, and I got a long list of kind of random things that you can do for fun. But Matt, can you give me a few of your uh, ones that are really good and I wish I had put on my list? Oliver, have you ever, have you ever said misc for miscellaneous in real life? Misc? Yeah, like misc. Do you know oh, what? Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Because because we're both reading our show notes right now that says misc. I've never said it in real life before. So just just a, a funny aside. I was just I was like maybe we should say miss. I should clarify. This is miscellaneous, not like missed like misting tips or I don't know what misc would be otherwise. Anyways, miscellaneous misc tips for you here. Um, so one I would say is uh, knowing love languages. I think I talked about love languages in a past podcast, but that's just the idea that everyone gives and receives love in a couple different ways. So it's um, through uh, gifts, through acts of service, quality time, words of affirmation or physical touch. Um, so any of those ways are ways that we show love for one another. And that's like a friendship love or amorous love. Um, and there's a whole book about this. Um, I'm, I think it's Gary Chapman um, wrote a whole book about how to do it uh, with friends, but also how to do it appropriately in the workplace. So, um, and one of the cool little hacks is that if um, a person gives that form of love language, they often like to receive it as well. So if you find a person that um, really gives people praise or compliments a lot, the, uh, the chances are more likely than not that they like to receive those as well. So you can kind of, that's a, I guess a little psychological hack there too, is you can kind of think about, oh, what's this person's love language? Um, and then give it to them to see if that can help with uh, making friends in that way. Um, the other one I would say, uh, a great thing that I think Beth and Travis Allison, um, those uh, great Camp Hacker Go Camp Pro folks introduced at uh, the camp I grew up at was uh, the concept of wellies. And wellies were wellness partners. And um, your wellie was in charge. They weren't necessarily your friend, but they were somebody that was in charge of your physical and mental health throughout the summer. Um, that wasn't a, it wasn't the camp nurse. It wasn't a leadership staff. You were usually almost always a wellie with someone who was on a similar level. So a co-counselor and um, some of those things that your wellie would do would like check in on you and say, you know, are you sleeping? Okay. Um, hey man, you look kind of tired. Um, maybe, you know, maybe take a nap. And there was no judgment for your wellie to call you in on that and say like, you know, Hey, you know, um, maybe, a third chicken burger isn't the kind of energy your body needs right now. Um, how about I make you a salad? Or maybe you bring them a salad or you bring them a, a full bottle of water with some ice in it. Um, that's a great way for your welly. We would also, um, it was also a really, really hot upcoming summer. So they talked about being hydrated. And for those of you who don't know, um, you can tell how hyd hydrated you are based on how yellow and smelly your pee you have less pee than you think you would. Um, who knew we were going to talk about pee today, Oliver? Um, but um, so we would say, how's your pee? And then the cheer was clear and copious. So if you have clear and copious pee, you're good. Um, the last thing I would say is welcoming ninjas. And this is kind of a challenge that I would have for any returners listening to this podcast. Um, it's a really weird transition from P to this. I don't, I don't know if I can do it. Anyway, the, the wellness, uh, the well, welcoming ninjas were people that um, were experienced staff and it was their mission to welcome a new staff member without them knowing. So I, as a director, you could just do this on your own. You don't have to be a director um, to do this. The director would assign um, experienced staff to welcome a new staff member without them knowing. So the rules were that they could never find out who you were or realize that you were being specifically attentive to them, but you always made sure they had a place that they knew what was going on in a session, that if there was any insider language that you would get filled in or um, that uh, you were always included in whatever program was going on um, and that you had to find out some special things about them, like what street they grew up on or like what their favorite flavor of ice cream is or something like that. Um, and that was just like a cool little secret challenge and a way that we, some responsibilities that we gave to returning staff members. Um, I guess even if you're a new staff, thinking about it now, even if you're a new staff member, you could just pick somebody and do this with. I think that would, it would just go a long way in making your whole camp a better place for everyone to, uh, to be. Uh, yeah, and to better equip you for that, I have a really good one. Uh, 
last summer, uh, we did a Make My Day book. Thanks uh, to, uh, there was a camp, I think, that posted on the Summer Camp Professionals Facebook page, which is a great source, uh, about a Make My Day book. And they had a questionnaire, and every staff member filled it out uh, during a meal, I guess, at lunch. And for us, that's what we did. And then hole punched it, put it in a binder, and we put it right next to the day, like the sign-out binder for camp. Uh, so whenever somebody signed out, if they had maybe a welly or they were a welcome ninja or something, um, or there was a co-counselor, they could go and look into that book and say, oh, I know that I need to get Matt some candy today. And his favorite type of candy is boom. And that will make his day a little bit better. So it was the make my day book. And uh, it was a trial period for the summer. So I'm bringing it back again this coming summer and we're going to keep running with it and uh, hopefully it will be something that is long lasting here at camp and we'll see some people get have their days made because of it. Um, but I think we don't have wellies and we don't have welcome ninjas here. So that's something, something that I would love to incorporate. And I think the make, a, make my day book would be awesome to assist that. Uh, I went pretty cool in a weird direction with my misc. It's all different like activities that you can mm. do at camp kind of. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I said uh, is do a make, a time off adventure scavenger hunt. So uh, maybe at the beginning of staff training, you write down a hundred really dumb things that you can do either on time off or maybe around camp that don't interrupt the daily processes of camp. And as they get completed, you can check them off and maybe have a prize at the end. And you can do it in teams or something. Uh, I also said you could do the same kind of thing with camp bingo in a way, or you can do challenge camp where like the camp director puts this to everybody. And it would be a good way to foster some team-like activities. You could get a friend. Maybe you pair your wellies together, and the wellies have to do all the activities together. Mm, so nice. It's a really fun thing. And um, I based the idea off of something that I did in high school, and it had really dumb things on the list, like dress yourself up in tinfoil and stand outside of the local Walmart, um, eat every Whopper option at Big uh, at Burger King, uh, all these different types of things to, that were really dumb, but were a really good way to foster friendship outside of just the normal camp stuff. Uh, another one was Spoon. We've done that here in the past at Camp Jewel. Uh, some people may know it as Assassin, but essentially every counselor gets a spoon and they keep it on their person. And then as the weeks go on, you have a, another person on camp that you've got to find and tag with your spoon. And if you do so, they've been eliminated and you get their target and then uh, the game goes on until there's only one remaining person with a spoon. Nice. Uh, to expedite this during camp, we had specific rules that made people safe. And then the rules kind of started deteriorating after time. There was a great picture of me on my Facebook, if you want to stalk, wearing a onesie in the middle of the summer. Because one of the rules was if you were wearing monochromatic colors, you'd be safe all day. So I wore a very warm, very hot onesie that was all red and it kept me safe. And I won spoons that year as a counselor. I was very proud of it. Um, <laughs> another good idea is secret Santa. Um, everybody gets paired up and you get a secret present for somebody. You can do this maybe once in the summer. You could have a secret Santa that happens once a week all summer, uh, and you could limit it, make it something really small, like a thank you note or a your awesome letter or a small piece of candy. Uh, you don't have to do something super crazy for it, but just a way that somebody gets something in their mailbox every day or once a week or once during the summer that makes them a little bit happier. Um, events for staff morale are really good ones. We do something called Morale Corral here at Camp Jewel where uh, a director typically organizes it. Sometimes it is a leadership staff member where uh, everyone can get together and just kind of relax for a night. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we've had things called Dude Fest or Lady Palooza, which are gender events. But this past summer, we did a gender neutrality ball, which was a lot of fun, uh, and our staff really enjoyed that. Um, the post-summer friendship, though, so you keep those friendships going. I really enjoy being a part of a fantasy football league. That's for some of my old camp buddies, but you can do any fantasy sports, and you just stay in contact with that. Um, there's the post-summer meetups. I know of a couple camps that do something called a winter meeting. So they meet in the middle of January somewhere that's a equal location during that college break time. And they can talk about camp things. They can be like a work, but also a social thing and talk about what's gonna be up for summer 2020. Uh, and it's also just a good time if 
you're of age maybe to get together with a few friends and have a drink or a nice dinner together. Uh, but those are some cool misc or miscellaneous things that you can do to uh, bring on those friendships at camp or even after camp is over. So that kind of concludes everything we wanted to talk about, about making friendships, which means it's time to get ready for this coming summer. So Matt, what is something that you're doing to get ready this year? Yes, uh, I love get ready because it's just like the random things that, that we think of every week. Uh, mine was, I thought of it when I looked to the left in my office and I saw my trusty, for those of you tuning in on YouTube, which is like all 10 of you who tune into each episode, um, maybe, maybe we'll get a spike because I'm showing off my awesome backpack. Um, and I think getting yourself a good backpack that's going to last, This I have a North Face backpack. It is the North Face Hot Shot backpack. Um, and I've had this backpack since 2009 and I used it every single summer and I had it on my back every single summer. The amount of sweat that is on that back panel of that backpack is like sickening. Um, but not only getting a good backpack cause you're going to want to put lots of stuff in it. Um, things I would always have in my camp backpack were a mini first aid kit, right? Bandages will save the world, especially for young kids. Um, my raincoat was always stuffed into the bottom of my backpack. And I'm talking about a real raincoat, folks. You've heard me say this before in a get ready. Ponchos do not count as raincoats. Um, so make sure you have that. Maybe you have a, um, I had a little mini raincoat for my knapsack. That's how crazy I am about raincoats. Like just like a rain cover that would keep it dry in case it was uh, pouring rain. Uh, a deck of cards or a small board game that you can just bust out. And that's a great way to build connections with um, staff that we didn't talk about is bring some board games to camp. Um, Oliver is looking for someone to play his Game of Thrones Risk. Um, so if you can uh, make it, make Oliver's day and come to Camp Jewel and play with him. That would be great. Uh, I always had a hockey sack or a small uh, ball, like a tennis ball that I could play with because there's a million games that you can play just with that. A great water bottle um, that fits into the side of the knapsack. Um, at camp, people knew me as the director. I always had my Nalgene in one pocket and my coffee mug in the other. Um, and then a granola bar or a, an energy bar if you're allowed to have that. And then extra socks. Why extra socks? you never know how great extra socks are until you need them. So a great camp backpack that's good to go and has all your stuff on it um, is, has, has been my go-to move. No matter where I go, I will always have, maybe not this backpack, but a trusty backpack with me. I just like that that backpack now has going on 11 years of matte sweat in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, my tip is go on Amazon. You can bulk order uh, nice vinyl stickers. Uh, I have a bunch right here, so... Maybe we'll get more viewers on YouTube, but I have a bunch of them right here and they're good for sticking out water bottles and such. Uh, but you as a good camp counselor uh, can order them for eight bucks off of Amazon and you'll get a hundred stickers. And then, you know, if you have them in your backpack, like Matt has, then when your campers don't have a water bottle, they don't get a sticker. But if they have their water bottle, they get a really cool sticker and you just spend eight bucks that saves you the headache of, constantly reminding your campers of stickers because you never know when they might want a um, drowsy Pokemon sticker. Ooh, nice. Um, we can post that. Uh, I'll get Oliver to post that link in the show notes um, so that you can just find our show notes and you can go bing, bang, boom and get yourself some stickers. Yeah, get some sweet stickers. Matt, if people want to get a hold of you, how can they do that? Yeah, thanks. If people want to get a hold of me, my email is matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at gocamp.pro, or you can find me at iscus, I-S-C-U-S, on Instagram. And uh, if you have an idea for a show or anything, any feedback for us that you haven't left in a rating and review, because our great listeners who do that are awesome, um, you can uh, email me there. Also, uh, Oliver and I are both going to be at ACA Tri-State um, and this episode will be coming out right before Tri-State. So Oliver and I have said we're going to bring our stickers and we would love to hear from, uh, from you. And we'll give you a crisp high five and a good quality water bottle sticker, like one of the good vinyl ones, not the crappy ones that are going to like leave crap all over your water bottle. Uh, yeah, if you want to get a hold of me, you can uh, don't follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is lame, but uh, you can follow <laughs> Camp Jules' Instagram. We do a really good job there. Um, but you can also email me at oliver.gregan at ghymca.org, or you can just reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, I love Facebook Messenger. It is an awesome messaging service. So just say hi. 
So thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's show, we would be so grateful if you left us a review wherever you were listening to this podcast. Your ratings and reviews not only help us know what you like or don't like about the show, but it also boosts our ratings and helps more people discover the show. That's right. And don't forget that you can find all of our show notes at camphacker.tv slash podcast. There's lots of great stuff there uh, from our show and the other Go Camp Pro podcasts out there. And just so you know, um, we are about... Um, about a week away now from moving our entire podcast feed to a brand new place. We'll, we'll post a couple more episodes on the Camp Hacker feed, but make sure you're tuning in to the GoCamp.pro Instagram account, uh, GoCamp Pro on Facebook, and in the Summer Camp Professionals group. We'll do our best to post that out so you can resubscribe and find us in uh, your favorite podcast app. Yep. So thanks for listening, friends. And remember, camp is camp and camp's all good. Mm-hmm.